Mm. Before we start, what are your thoughts on like couples that watch shows together and then like, I can't continue until I'm with my partner? I think it's sweet until it isn't. I think it finds a way to become a grainy sour after a while, especially because it bleeds into, oh, you started this show without me, even though there hadn't been any talks to start that show. You know, just, and then one person just trigger like, wow, PTSD. wow, you slide me, wow. And I'm just like, I just watch TV. I watch TV. And I think, especially in this age where it's not like, I think that was what makes it annoying. We live in the most convenient time to watch TV. We can't watch it again. So don't come to me without, wow, you slide me. We slide broadcast network television. We slide HBO. <laughs> We have Netflix now, we have Prime, we have Show Max or HBO Max or whatever the fuck the kids call it. We have Disney Plus, Disney Minus. We have all these avenues oh, to enjoy God. TV at a, at the most convenient time, place, and way way possible. So don't come to me with that rah rah. You know? All that chat. About why do you, want to you like, slide me. Do you want to add whoever you're talking about? No, I love you. Okay. Anyway, Tim, are you ready to start? Yes, sir. Die, motherfucker. Hi, hi, and welcome back to the Popcorn for Dinner podcast. And welcome to this probably very expensive house off the coast of Lake Como. By definition, Mm. I bought without looking at it. And joining me on what may be our final mission as partners... I've never met his parents, so he may be Loki Korean. It's TMT. TMT, welcome back. Dama, arigato. That's Ju. What? Ah, okay. Hmm. <laughs> no, nope. let's move on. Nope. I am not going to. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, how are you? We're going to talk about the second half of Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I'm very good. Let's get into some TV, friend. Oh, uh-huh. you think we're friends? Yeah. Oh, uh-huh. you're deluded. That's that's nice. Anyway, that's um, <laughs> first things first. So Maruch is back. By the time you listen to this, you probably already know this, but just in case you don't, they're yeah. back. Last week we said. Yeah. I know we said. Oh, last episode we said they were going to be on a new platform, but you know what? The Powers that be succumbed, so the original submarine yeah. platform is still yeah, there. People, so please check people, for it. If... People, people pressure them. Our fans are unhinged and um, just quite wonderful, lovely people. And um, I think the Spotify execs are starting to fear for their actual lives, both in Nigeria mm-hmm. and probably parts of South Africa, really, um, where we have. Is that Spotify? Is that Spotify in Nigeria? Like this was my yeah. office in Nigeria. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Well, we're, we're sizable people. We just don't have money. Um. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, quickly, guys. Wrap. Um. Admin. We did a 2023 wrap up. TMT was on for two of those three episodes. Uh. He, AU, and I spoke about our five best TV episodes of the year. Really fun. Um. Mm-hmm. Got some nice feedback about that. We also went through my top 10 on a separate episode. Also very fun. Mm. Um, getting I like like getting some people say, oh, I've watched 8 out of 10. Someone like they've watched 2 out of 10. So it's just like giving people shows to watch. Um, Chinasa was on to talk about The Bear Season 2. That was also another great conversation. So please check those out. Um, I also did a most anticipated TV shows of 2024 list. Mm. So you can check that out. Most of the shows are on data at the moment because the TV industry is in a bit of a weird place, but hopefully they'll all come out this year. Um, is this cinema came back last week with an episode on poor things and then they'll be back later this week as they continue their pre-Oscars coverage to talk about um two great movies, the announcement movie four and the holdovers. You've seen the holdovers, haven't you, TMT? I have seen the holdovers. Thoughts? Any thoughts? recommend for people to have listening to this? Um, if I was in a posh private boarding school and I had to spend um, 
my informative Christmas on school grounds, I would fucking, I would throw the wildest tantrum ever. I think he handled it quite well, if I'm being honest. Well, considering, um, I mean, not to spoil the movie, but considering how late he finds out. Yeah. Um, mm. But did you like the movie? I did. I love I love the cinematography, the grainy, um, almost mm. lo- film-looking texture it had. It was mm-hmm. really cute. And um, obviously the writing is incredible. The soundtrack is gorgeous. Lots of folk music, which is like my jam. And um, yeah, man, it's it was a vibe. I like a good coming of age story because it was a coming of age story for Paul Giamatti. But it was also a lovely coming of age story for um, the other main character. character, yeah. And even yeah, um, um, my fair lady, the woman who lost her son. Yeah. Um, so speaking of her, like we know, like this movie will most likely have at least one Oscar win. Come Oscars night. For Divine yeah, Joy Randolph, and then you know what? If anyone's gonna, Wait, you think she's taking Killian, it? It's probably gonna, be, yeah, she's taking supporting actress. So, okay. if anyone's gonna be Killian, it probably be Paul Giamatti. So yeah, check out the Hold of Us. A really, really good movie. Really coming of age, cute movie. Um, a charming movie. Okay, speaking of charming, I still haven't seen Mr. Oppenheimer. I don't have. I'm not engaging in this with you. I do not know what. To, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to say to you? I'm sorry. I'm just. I'm sorry. Yeah, it, I, exactly. I want to apologize like, to you. I want to apologize to you. I'm sorry. Yeah, because I, 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 yeah, do I you, wanted to do this. Do you accept my apology? Not really, but like, you know what? Okay, yeah. I just, I know how to. I will just move on. I will just move on. Like it's just a thing yeah. that I have. I'm like, okay, that's that's a trait about you. You still haven't seen up and down almost twelve months after. So like, it's fine. Like, whatever. I don't know. But, uh, anyway, um, Mr. And Mrs. Smith. The second half, uh, episode five, is written by Carla Chink and Stephen Glover, Donald Glover's brother and writing partner on, I think it was on Swarm, but also most, like, most notably Atlanta. Episode six, written by Francesca Sloan. Episode seven, written by Yvonne Hannah Yee, Skylar Pappas, and Francesca Sloan. And the finale is written by Francesca Sloan and Donald Glover. Episode five is directed by Karina Evans. Episode six and seven are directed by Amy Simons. And episode eight, the finale is directed by Donald Glover. What are your thoughts on the second half of this season? And I guess where this well, season, the season leaves us. Give me your general thoughts. Um, so here's the thing. I think episode five is a gorgeous piece of TV. That's, it's just, That's Ron Perlman. It, yeah, it's just really beautifully shot because it's a spy show, but the way... You know, I always say like location is also a character in TV shows and movies, and the way they shoot it, be if you just took a still for still, it wouldn't feel like a spy, a spy show. It feels like this sort of beautiful celebration of the Italian coast. Um, that being said, Karina Evans directed the music video for Nice for What Drake. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so mm-hmm. yeah, so mm-hmm. um, she's fucking great. Isn't that was kind of how um, like she... breakthrough into the industry yeah 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 you know drake man he will be putting people on um certainly put me on i found out about this podcast from him so um, oh that's nice yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um yeah. it was quite expensive to get that promo for him from him don't even ask me how much we spent on that anyway i can't even um, imagine I can't imagine. Yeah, it was a, yeah it was no, a it's a lot. great episode. It's um, It kind of showed... I think the episode was meant to highlight what they'd be like as parents. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I mean, and first subtly and then very much, like, overtly when overtly, he asks about kids. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's gorgeous. I felt bad about that beautiful space being burned. The house? The place. cottage? Yeah, that hurt my feelings because that place was gorgeous. Well, it was probably for the best because like, why was there so much dynamite in there? And they probably couldn't read any of those Italian books in the library. Um, oh, no, it's a, yeah, it's a great episode. It shows like how well they work together, even when they're not really trying to work together. They're just a solid unit. Mm-hmm. And I think. Um, 
you know how I say that like the first half of the show kind of shows how strong their relationship is, and the second mm-hmm. half is, would be the dissolution of their relationship. I said that in the last episode, and I predicted mm-hmm. it correctly, because wow, this is the beginning mm-hmm. of the end. Um, and yeah. another thing I really like is how um, the show is nothing like the movie, but it definitely tries to hit um, hits a lot of beats from the movie. So I think this like is what? like one of, um, for instance, and we'll get to this later. There's always the fight between the couple. Yeah, yeah. Which I mean, is, that was inevitable. Very, yeah. Yeah, which is very movie-esque in that sense. And then there's um, this is like them working working together against like a sort of commando SWAT team unit type situation, which also happens in the movie. Happens in the movie. Uh, yeah, and um, no, it's lovely. You remember also in the movie they they, they save this. I mean, I think they're competing for this character who's played by. Adam Brody, Seth Cohen from the OC days. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I think Rob Perman feels like a reimagining of that character in a sense. You know? So, yeah. Hmm. I really liked Ron Perman's performance, and I think we'll get to that later. It was just, mm-hmm. when you realize what he's Brilliant. doing, what he's meant to be, that, that he's meant to be a child, it, it just it was just hilarious. Um, mm-hmm. Is this your best episode out of the batch, the second half, the four episodes? It's up there. I feel like it's probably the one I'd like if I just wanted to get the feel of the show again without watching the entire thing. It's probably the one I'd go to. Hmm. So my favorite episode out of the batch is episode six, which is a therapy episode. Hmm. I I really like that episode. I think it's funny. I think the directing, the editing between conversations is is so funny in that in that thing. Like sometimes it cuts between, like it cuts on Donald like laughing. Or he cuts and Donald trying to like say something, and then they cut to a scene in the flashback that con- that direct- directly contradicts that. Um, I think Sarah Paulson is really funny. Well, mm-hmm. I'll talk about her in a second as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, we like we predicted last last episode that this was going to be a much darker second half than the first. Like the first half was all cutesy, and we're fo- watching these guys fall in love, and by the second mm-hmm. half, we're basically watching them fall out of love, or at least fall into hatred and anger um yeah and i think we'll touch on all of that when we focus primarily on the finale i just want to quickly note that like this show and i only i could only really take down a few because i only remember a few but this show did this thing where it, like a lot of my hollywood pet peeves it like intentionally like does not do them like for example you know how on TV or in movies, like somebody's like watching something and just close their laptop when somebody walks in. And you're like, mm. I mean, Succession did a bit of this in their final season. You're like, once you open that laptop, what you're playing is going to continue playing, like in the real world. So I like, like, I remember the scene in the first half, I didn't mention it when he's like searching on her laptop and he sees, comes across that porn that she has like planted for him. And then he closes the yeah. laptop and then he, he remembers to go back and like pause it because like that's just how stuff mm-hmm. works and then in the Michaela Cole episode she's like what do you want tea coffee water and then Jane is like yeah and normally in, ho- in like movies and shows the person just goes and comes back with something and Michaela Cole is like wait wait what do you actually want which which one of those three <laughs> do you do you actually want so I was like I was like I think it's one of those things where like the writers have seen these things in films and tv and they're angry about them so they're like no let me actually correct them there's some other points where I just couldn't remember mm-hmm. the other ones um okay like people not actually eating. Yeah, yeah. Once you know that people don't eat. Yeah. Yeah, once you know that people oh that one is down that one is just a different thing. Yeah. Like I, they I, have this spread and, and they just come. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you're being influenced. Um 100%. I have on my notes that like the Hitler the Hitler joke is just legitimately funny because I think it's hilarious. Ron, Ron Perlman's Wait, Hitler joke. I just, I, I just oh, think it's yeah, funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. The one is like awesome. nobody cares about the acro, nobody cares about the Jews. Um, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. a funny joke. And if anybody takes what I just said out of context and clips it, then this podcast will either be dissolved or grow, depending on where we, we've, what Reddit thread we find ourselves on. Um, mm-hmm. I really like Donald's outfits during the therapy sessions. I feel like you might. I feel like that does where like your vibe. 
Well, not just... really. Yeah, I know. What, I know what you're alluding to. Just like because he's wearing a lot of like big, um, just like groovy shirts and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And it, he he's definitely stylish. It's just not in it. It's just not the way I would dress, or it, it's not in the right. way that would work for me. Oh, he's I don't think I would much... ever be able to dress like that. But yeah, I just like the outfits. Yeah, I mean, it's nice to see. And I think that's something that's been pissing me off about TV for a while. I I feel like I haven't really seen... Like, there was a time where you could watch a TV show or a movie and based on the style, not being... Um, not, not, not even the date... The, so, basically, you could see the dating of the style or just how stylish the characters were. You could, like, pin it down to... Oh, this was... Either 2015 or 2016. This is this was either it's not even 20, those years don't have it. So I would say you, could, you maybe from like the 90s backwards, you could pinpoint the time by the styles. But like I would say since about 2010 and now, TV styling has gotten really lazy, and characters just don't look good anymore. Even when they do, they don't. You know what I'm saying? Well, like, cause I'm just thinking of shows that I love, and I don't think any of those characters is meant to be stylish. Yes. So, but we bring back stylish characters, because you know, there's a point where, in yeah, the show okay. where he says he doesn't he doesn't joke about fashion. And I'm like, yeah, 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 he said that, yeah, yeah. Even in but the like, I'm thinking of like, was white. you don't think Darius was stylish on Atlanta? There, he, his style was more bohemian than anything, and that's like harder to pin down. That could be any. Those are just, that those are just any words you're saying to me. No, bohemian is just like you know, a bit eclectic, hippie-ish, and like Darius' mm-hmm. style is literally could be Andre three thousand in the late nineties or Andre three thousand now, right. on Mustafa def- two years ago. Like it's just very, it's yeah, you can't pin that down. Okay, I'm just thinking of any other shows that like. Contemporary mm-hmm. shows that, yeah, no, like Succession, they they, they wear suits. Um, mm-hmm. She looked really good in season two. She was stylish in season two, but I know that's not what you're talking about. Um, yeah, that's quite the a lot. Bear, they're, they're too busy to be dressed. The bear, he, he, I, I would say he, Jeremy's very stylish at the bear. Him and Matty, Matty, they're very stylish. And they just went the same, th- and just went the same thing over and over again. Like, yeah, but there's a way Jeremy puts together those t-shirts and even the jeans where he puts them in the oven and he brings them out the way they fit and everything. <laughs> the bear is very stylish. Um, okay. Um, no, okay. Let's go back to what we're I, I, I'm not going to disagree with you. Let's go back to what we're talking about. Uh, the therapy episode, just some other things I liked about it. I, I, this is an obvious thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just liked how with each succeeding setup of like their, their therapy sessions, you could see them like grow farther apart mm. based on like the events of, of the week. Um, mm. It's funny because again, it, just a little peek behind the curtains when we got this screen as six and seven were mislabeled. Mm. So Ibuka, who also has them because he's producing the episodes, um, he, so he watched seven before six. No, because again, they were mm. mislabeled. And it's, it's funny watching that because like, I was like, oh, if I did that, like, you would think, because in seven, you would think, why are these guys like so six would almost be like a flashback episode? Because you're like, why are they mm-hmm. so far apart at this point? Like, why what happened? And then you kind of almost see the therapy, like, oh, that's how that's how they got here. Mm-hmm. Like the therapy episode is just a very efficient way of like just showing that dissolution over like three, four weeks. And you're like, oh, okay, this is this is how this happened. Um if I was in therapy and my wife said that the good thing about me is I leave the toilet seat down. I think I would divorce her on the spot. But that's all she can think about. I just think, well, why are we wasting our time here? What are we, what are we doing here? Yeah, no, I, I, I hear what you're saying 100%. I think she's also very... Because I, I understand her character. I think the way Maya plays her is very... She's very straightforward, right? And I, I think that's something I like yeah. about Maya as an actress. She, she knows how to attack characters she's played. And hmm. she's very... Um, she doesn't dance around them and how messed up they might be. This and that. She doesn't like leave space for guessing. It's kind of oh, this is a person who has um, 
these issues and it shows up in these ways. Whereas like um, Donald's performance was more, oh, okay, you had to like literally hear, you, you had to hear what everyone had to say about him to understand why his character was the way he was. Whereas my mm. character just kind of does her thing and you're like, oh, okay, that's who she is. Um, so when she, when she makes certain comments and they're just very, very cutting and you know in the moment she's trying to hurt him and you know that she also knows what she's doing is wrong but she can't do anything about it because that's just how she is at this point in her life and she doesn't know how to be any other way you know hmm. she may be so super yeah. um yeah. do you want to talk about your favorite guest performance from this batch first or do you want to talk about the finale and where that story where it leaves us I'll give you the option um, to pick. Let's go guest performance first. I want okay. to hear yours. I think mine is Sarah Paulson. Hmm. I think, I think, Ron Perlman was very funny. I think Ron Perlman was was like Michaela Cole was just surprising because that whole, the review. The, sorry, yeah, I was going to say she was charming. No, oh, she was charming. But the reveal that she's like an agent, that was that surprised me. She looked mm-hmm. great. Like she still had that like Wakanda Forever um mm-hmm. fitness regime on. Uh, but I don't know the Sarah Post, I think because I also really like that episode, but Sarah Paulson thing is really funny. Like when she goes like, What did happen to Maya? Or like just have sometimes they cut to her, just have facial reactions to what these guys are saying. And obviously she thinks this is all mm-hmm. software engineering. Um when mm-hmm. she talks about like her grandparents, like one of the Nazis, love to hear them play. It saved their lives. Mm-hmm. This is not a playing piano. I just, I don't know. I really, I liked her performance um, across across the episode. What, what about you? What was your favorite? Ooh, um, Sarah was great. Um, I really liked um, Michaela. I think the interesting thing about Michaela is that obviously I'd seen the trailer for the show numerous times. And I remember there's a bit where she does like some hand to hand combat in the trailer. So I knew Oh, I didn't remember that. Yeah, I knew going to the episode that she was someone. But honestly, like before they get physical, I mm. think I had just completely, completely forgotten. Because the way that scene plays out, I had no idea she was a spy. I just I, if just I completely forgot. And then, you know, everything happens. And I'm just like, oh, this is really interesting. And I really like that she got away, you know. Um, I like that they filled that mission. Mm-hmm. And it made it me happy because... Also, it means we can see her again. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't even want to see her again. I just like it because at, at some point, you have to, like, start thinking, well, this organization, they're not really good guys, are they? Mm-hmm. You know, they're not really the good guys, quote unquote. They're not Team America, World Police. They're just a fucking private contracting spy agency. So I found that really interesting. And um, I think my favorite guest performance was, man, I won't lie, Paul Dano kind of comes in at the end in the way I really like. <laughs> his, Moby, his Moby Dick monologue. Yeah, that was beautiful. <laughs> and um, despite having a gun um, put to his head in New York City, which is insane, mm-hmm. but like it's America, I guess, he's still so thirsty for that house that he goes by to drop a book at the end. But and he sees also the mess and he's like, oh, actually, I think they're ready to sell. He's like, we're so back. Oh, yeah, so so bad. Bad. Okay, I'm going to do something. Yeah. Um, we kind of did this a bit with Wagner Mora and Alex Karsgård last episode, but um, let's try something. I want you to recast any of the guest stars across the season, but recast them in a different guest role. That you'd oh, have liked to see. I, I didn't even think about this, really. I mean, and yeah, we did it with Wagner and um, Skarsgård, but yeah, that would be my first pick. Like him yeah. and his gym with um, well, like, Wagner, excluding them, I guess, because we, we did that last week. Yeah. Parker Posey, yeah. I guess it would be um, it would be 
Sarah Paulson on the cover pulled out. Huh. Yeah, it's weird. But Michael, yeah, but Michael, but Sarah Paulson is like a distinctly white therapist. Yeah, I think a big part of why Michaela was there was also she was black, so she could like probably yeah. relate to a lot of things that Maya couldn't. Um, but I guess even in that sense where they're just talking, she's she would use therapy speak and just talk as someone who just wanted to listen and. You know, yeah, you know, friends are just um, like you can be in a relationship with someone for like six months, and you guys there's just stuff where you roll your eyes at each other, even though you still love each other, and then you're in a friendship with a woman, and it's been it's lasted for ten years, and you never roll your eyes at each other. You take each other, you take each other very seriously. They're just good friends to each other, um, because there's just security. I think... I think also inter- intimacy, inter- yeah, intimacy kind of breeds contempt. Yeah. Oh, at least that kind of. Is, yeah. Intimacy in many ways is seafiness, especially for emotionally unintelligent people, like the main characters of mm. the show. Yeah. yeah, and it's just like, yeah, in, in, yeah, intimacy kind of always muddies the water, water, so you have to find a way to like wade through those waters um okay uh let's talk about the finale and where this this the season ends up do we think this is a like a season two kind of show or is this the end of the story no i think it's a season two show what i'm not sure of is if it's a um like an anthology you've, or you've been on this you've been on you've had this idea since since the last episode about it being an anthology with different smiths yeah well I, I will say this i think if it's an anthology it's going to be in the way of fargo where we'll see characters from past seasons pop up you know, once yeah. in a while yeah once yeah. in a while so yeah, yeah. like i kind of like love life um because okay so Hmm, that doesn't really answer the question I was going to ask you next because then it's like, what do we think happened? Obviously, obviously the way it's shot is for us to ask this question so as we won't be good podcasters oh, that, if we didn't ask the question. He's alive. He's alive, 100%. So alive. Jane is alive. Yeah, both of them. I mean, them. What, what, is, what is noteworthy, and I, I do think she's alive as well, unless this is the end of the show in which it's probably... If, if, if the show was a limited series and that's how the show ends, then it becomes a much darker story about kind of like how doomed marriage can be mm-hmm. and how like we're all just gonna die. It's not really a love story. Uh, but so I, I do think they're alive, but I think it's obviously noteworthy that like three shots go out and she said she only had one bullet. So we know at least, we know Parker Posey gets out at least two shots. So it's like, what mm-hmm. happens? How does that happen? And everything. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, what did you think of like the episode starts with um, somebody being somebody shooting at Jane. I think most, I think the audience knows that it's not John. So we're just kind of waiting for you. Please just ask mm-hmm. him about Max for like forty five minutes. But it starts with people somebody shooting at Jane and killing Max, and then we see John with his mom. And I, I like when John is competent. I know Jane keeps calling him incompetent, but I like when I, I'm like, oh, you're actually a spy. And part of that is because I'm still like in Atlanta brain. We're seeing Donald Glover being good at his job is still like rare to me. I'm still like remembering Ern. Um so like I like that he spots just because the seat is up, he's like he spots and like he figures out the bomb. So yeah, and then mm-hmm. they start their whole Miss and Mrs. Smithness of running across the city, fighting each other. Um he gets hit by a car, like Brad Pitt did in in the original in the movie. And then mm-hmm. yeah, they go into the house for the fights that you alluded to. And there's some there's some kind of like references to that movie fight. I think I, I caught some. I'm sure mm-hmm. there's so much more. Like obviously the entire fight itself, the entire sequence is like a reference to the house shootout in the movie. But also there's the part where I don't know yeah. who says it. I think I, I don't know if it's John that says it in, in the show, but like in the movie, Ajana Jolie's Jane says like you're alive, you're still alive, baby. To to Brad Pitt to John and okay. Brad Pitt acts like he's, he's yeah like he's dead like he's hurt and that's kind of what Donald mm. does here but she, then she says you're 
but like yeah i don't know mm-hmm. um and then the fights like just like the rest of the show you see that these guys are human they are not like super humans like brad pitt and Angelina Jolie. like this fight really takes it out of them out on them like they don't just like it's not like a movie fight where you just fight and you you have a bit of blood and you're back to full mm-hmm. health here yeah, they're like they are struggling so i don't know what did you think of the fight what did you think of the truth serum induced confessions and then we can get to the safe house the bunker I definitely, at the end. yeah yeah i definitely really like the truth serum part i was really excited about it because i thought oh i wish all couples could do this because there's a yeah. lot of catharsis mm-hmm. in there that was really smart yeah yeah, yeah it was really good writing uh, especially because they introduced it in the second episode and it's just a nice callback as well. Um, mm-hmm. The uh, Going back to where you said um, about John being competent, you know the funny thing is like the show just shows that like, yeah, he's not a details person, but he's probably better in the field than she is. Like, I feel like John is one of those people where the less time they have to make any de- decision, the better decision they make. Yeah, because he's good on his feet, and she's type A, and she wants he's everything very... laid out. Exactly, exactly. Um, but he's just very like he's very observant. He's very, um, mm-hmm. yeah. He's he's just a spy. You know, when a spy is a spy, where like they're turned on on all angles at the same time. Like he's very alert. He's also very in the moment with conversations and things he's doing. He pays attention. He's probably really good at learning. Um, so yeah, when they try and kill him and his mom, and he's just like, "Wow!" I do enjoy the fact that like he doesn't suspect her, but she automatically suspects him. Like she's been in this relationship with him, and she thinks he killed her cat. Like knowing him, like. In that show, you get to really... The show is a character study. That's all it is. And you mm-hmm. know... It's a, it's a, it's a relationship drama. Characters. Well, you think he, he doesn't suspect her. Yeah. I don't think he suspected her. That's, a, that's interesting. No, if John suspected her for trying to kill him and his mom, he would not have gone in there like that. By the end, during the truth serum, he's like, you tried to set up my mom and I in my mom's house. Yeah, I think he says that to her. Unless he said that. I don't think he unless maybe he, he didn't like that. suspect her originally. No, I think he did. But maybe he didn't suspect yeah. her originally and then when she started shooting at him, he was like, no, Oh I, fuck, I, I okay, maybe he, you do yeah, want to kill me. Yeah, I I don't I don't exactly. I don't think he suspected her immediately. I think she mm-hmm. as soon as it happened, she she knew it was him. But like mm. for him Oh yeah, she thought it was him immediately. Oh, yeah, she thought it was him immediately. He did not. He was like, oh, I'd, let me check on Jane. Yeah. And I also don't think he got... I don't think he got the text from Hi Hi that he should take out his Smith. I think only Jane got that. Only Jane got that. Who do you think? Which is, oh, God. Yeah, so... Do, do, do you think we've met Hi Hi yet? Okay, so we, I guess we can talk about this. <laughs> because when Wagner and Parker Posey are talking, I just started bursting out laughing because I don't think this is the case, but it'd be so funny if it is considering you're the one covering the show with me. Mm. How would you feel if Hi Hi is AI? Mm. I mean, it makes sense. But considering but your lack of love for AI stories. Yeah, I know. It's just, I think AI is usually more long-winded than Hi Hi. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't I think it to be AI. I don't think they're telling an AI story. I think they would want to be. They would want something more subversive and just frankly human. more plain and human in the yeah. story. But I mean, I wrote down some of the things that Wagner and Parker Posey say about about um, Hi Hi. Say the more you submit to soup, the stronger your faith. The easier it becomes. That could be a line from Severance. Mm-hmm. Um, they say he's never wrong. He knows what you're going to do before you do it. He knew where you were going to, mm-hmm. where you were going before you knew where you were going. He knew us all before we were smiths. You do what he tells you, and then you are rewarded with the gift of the present because the future is never promised, or something mm-hmm. like that. So, 
Yeah, I don't think it's going to be an AI story, but you can very see, like, it's like, why would he know me before I was a Smith if he's not AI? Yeah. But again, I don't, yeah. and obviously, all the communication has been electronically. So, but yeah, I just, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think we've seen her, her yet. I think that's like, mm-hmm. yeah, I think that's a proper reveal well, kind of situation. For, for later season. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, no. Um, it's interesting to me that show... Donald decided. To... Yeah. Yeah. So decided to work. Like do another multi, which is why I always thought it was a limited series until the finale. Like do another multi-season show. It's a bit Mystery out of Atlanta. It's a bit weird considering. I think how you know think how, how we know his brain works. I think we've realized, and I've realized specifically that he's just better at TV than movies. So he's going to make the highest level TV. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's never really done a movie yeah. as, as a proper movie. He's done stuff, but he's never written or yeah produced. Yeah, yeah he's acted in movies. Yeah, there, there's that period. I mean, he was yeah. in The Martian. There had that period where I, I think it's Lion possible King. that we see a season two where John is dead, though. It's quite possible. I mean, as, it's quite as possible. A show it after, gives Donald less. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. He he writes Francesca is showrunner, so he writes that he directs a few episodes where he gets to do other things. Um mm-hmm. And then you see, you get to see my probably with a new John or something. Um, what happens when you kill the, the finalizers? What happens when you finalize the finalizers? Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I have one more question. Yeah, go ahead. Do you think that um, the John and Jane at the beginning, that's Skarsgård and um, what's in the actor's name? Do you mm, think? Yeah. Um, do you think that they are? Her name is Elsa Gonzalez. I remember her. I think she was a money yeah. heist. Yeah. No, no, she wasn't no, a money no, no, heist. It was, the, it was the one arm girl that was a money heist. Yeah, and I was wrong about that. She, she was, was just there for one season. Yeah, she was in Baby Driver. One episode, was, one scene, um, sorry. She was John Hamm's woman, like, partner in Baby Driver, mm-hmm. if you remember that. Yeah, I feel like I've seen her in other things as well, just like, yeah. yeah I'm sure she's doing some yes. really cool stuff. Um, which was an ambulance, say, yeah, which I never saw. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen that either. But um, I do think they were meant to represent Brad Pitt and Jolie. Oh, that could be okay. Like, just extremely good-looking characters and how their thing ended. Mm. Yeah, so I think we're, we agree that Wagnamara and Parker Pussy, the ones that took them out, right? I watched that episode again, and you can't really tell, but yeah, it's a good theory. Oh, I don't think it's the actors. I don't think it's. I don't think it's the same actors. But I think like yeah. it's the. I think it's just oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think yeah. the idea. Yeah. The yeah, idea is that is those is that Jane, John and Jane that, that, that took them out. Um, I also like did you enjoy the, the show? man and the woman. You were right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Enjoy the show. Um, yeah. I would give it a. I'll give it a ninety-two percent if I run RT. Why is it? First of all, that's, that's, that's such a high and specific score. But why is it that whenever I ask somebody on the podcast if they enjoyed something, their initial instinct is always to rate. Like, just just say, just give me a verbal answer. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, yeah, I give you a seven. I'll give you an eight. I mean, I think it's clear about the way we've engaged about the show is that yeah. we really like it. Yeah, is yeah. it ninety-two percent or eighty-four percent? Oh my god, such a, such a discrepancy. Uh, mm. What did they forget to like put a few full stops? Um, no, 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 it's actually it's no, a yeah, I think, show. yeah, and I think we're both, I think we're both happy it's good just because of like yeah. our hope for it. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a wonderful show, it's a great show about marriage. I think in the end, it's really like, it's like there's all this shooting around, but like these people are. Have fallen in love and now they're trying to make it work and they've had like their first series of big fights mm-hmm. and now they're trying to figure out how do you move on and the mother-in-law has come into town and who i was trying to rack my brain I was like who does she sound like from the moment she was on mm-hmm. facetime in episode seven mm-hmm. and then i realized like an hour before recording I, she sounds like michelle obama to me huh. like just go back and listen to her scene and i was I like oh that. she sounds like michelle obama yeah, and anyway, but yeah, the mother-in-law comes into town. The 
the jealous or the jealousy about the neighbor. Is it, I don't know, it's just a good good show about about marriage and everything. Um, I still there's, don't think them having oh, kids is a good idea. Yeah, me, so me, me stop that. I think that was a, definitely a bad idea. Um, I was going to say that there's a scene that really triggered me in the show, and I don't know if I can talk about it here because I have an ex and um. She doesn't watch all my podcast stuff, but every now and then she tunes in. And I don't want a reason to get into it, but it's the scene where he goes into the poker game with those black guys and gets to just be really black. Yeah. And and she says they're being misogynistic and racist. And I'm just like, oh my God, I roll. But it was some of that. And I just thought that was a really, really good scene. It's, it's great, right? I really like that. It's, it's always, it's very, yeah, it's always yeah. funny. I, I think it's always funny when race is brought into a, a Donald Glover character just because of the external dialogue around mm-hmm. him and blackness mm-hmm. and black women. None of which I feel like yeah. I feel the need to parrot here. But like, if you're listening to this, you probably know what I'm talking about. And it's just like, yeah, it's always so funny. It's like, how much of it is him writing, leaning into that or writing against it or just writing? Like, if she says she's, he's performing blackness, how much of that is him like basically writing against what society is saying about him, or is it just like part of this? You get what you get what I mean. So it's always so interesting. Yeah, like, totally, yeah. And then obviously with the yeah. fact that she's obviously like he in the show he's not his Jane is not black, so mm-hmm. yeah. And then his ex, or not his ex, sorry, the person he's emotionally cheating with is black. So all those, all these things are always so like I'm like, huh? How much of this is like? There's a lot of because we know, like we know, we we read the the Donald or Donald interview. Like we know that he knows about these things. Mm-hmm. We know if anyone who hasn't read that interview, please go check it out. In which he taught, he basically calls Dave a show that was on my top ten, a McDonald's burger in Atlanta, a what a Anthony Bourdain burger, something along those lines. Anyway, yeah, the yeah. Don- where Donald interviews Donald, you you know that he knows about these things. It's like how much of that is seeping mm-hmm. into the art and his writing and everything yeah i'm only so intrigued when race comes up even when like when he says nigga on the show i'm just like huh okay yeah he's that kind of guy that's yeah it's like okay it's some code some code switching going on yeah i've no but like he there's a scene in the ron perlman episode where he says to jane this old nigga is getting on my nerves and i'm just like huh Yeah, I'm, I, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't know thing, the ethics around I, I that. Think, no, I. I don't think it's ethics. I think it's also like how you remember how she said he performs blackness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I just I found that so fucking offensive because <laughs> she doesn't realize that he, he the actual performance is is to her. Yeah. And it's not really a performance. It's just it's hard. It's 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 incredibly hard to explain to people that I'm not black. Yeah, I mean it's so funny you yeah. saying that. Now I'm just remembering the conversation that Denise, his mom, had with Jane, where he's like, where she's like, if he feels safe, he'll be Michael, but if he doesn't, mm-hmm. he'll be whatever you want him to be or whatever he needs to be. For uh... Bro. So, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah, that definitely goes in line with what you're saying about the real performances. Him performing to to her, and then with those guys, yeah. he was just comfortable and safe, and with his people. So and with his people, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very fun show. Very Hopefully, a good binge for you guys. But obviously, with the binge for much, people forget about it by by Tuesday. Um. This oh, is yeah. not going to be This show, this show is going to generate a lot of Twitter think pieces, and I can't wait to read them. <sighs> I can't wait to block them. Um... Uh, no, I don't even mean bad ones. Just like, especially with the stuff we just talked about, with um, race and the performance and just all of that. Yeah. I think there's going to be a lot of bro. That episode, I think, is episode two where they have the um, talk about mommy two shoes from Tom and Jerry. Yeah. And she does the And then he makes voice. her do the voice. Yeah, that's insane. But you see, I don't know if... How do I put this? And this is no, me being a it's... fan. Gone, yeah. No, I think this is me being a fan of Donald Glover. I, 
the internet doesn't start off by giving Donald the benefit of his doubt. So like, they never have. So like, yeah. So the reaction to that can be more like, "Wow, you made you thought it was funny to make a Japanese woman sound like this." Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, if it was a Michaela Cole scene, the initial reaction might be different. This is not me. Like, I'm not trying to cape for anyone. I'm just trying to talk about how I've assessed this or how I've felt this thing on- online. So like. The mm-hmm. things that you think might generate positive think pieces, I feel like they will generate negative think pieces that I'm able to get, I'm able to finish because I was just like, I'll mm-hmm. be rolling my eyes too hard. But we'll see. Mm-hmm. We'll see what happens. We shall see. Or maybe, just, shall maybe see. there'll be no think pieces and it's just been Amazon for hey. a bit. I mean, they've, they've marketed cool. the hell out of this show, so I, they definitely believe in it. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Any final stuff? Um, no, God bless you and God bless your family. Thank you, you too. Um, excited for three body problem. Yes, three body problem. Ricky Stenicky. Um, uh, what else is out there that's coming? There's a bunch of cool stuff coming. I can't really think of anything off the top of my head. Um, guys, yeah, go check out Shogun. Yeah, that's a vendor, yeah, that's a vendor for every 10 seconds. It's Shogun Good. out. Good. I don't know if it's out yet, but I saw the trailer. And guys, I, well, I'm not spoken about it, but it wasn't on my unsuspected list because I didn't know about it by then. But like, yeah, yeah go check out Shogun because the trailer looks fucking incredible. Um, oh no, it's gonna be fucking. Yeah, everything the original. No. Yeah, is it an HBO original HBO movie? No, this is an oh, original TV show. HBO adaptation from the eighties or yeah, eighties, and it was it was oh, like right. one of those. Yeah, it was huge. I think this is then. FX. I think this one is FX. Really, I so. thought it was HBO again. Okay, my BFX. No, Fair no, enough. But it looks great. Effect. It looks well, FX so is on another platform that has like, yeah, their their quality control is very high. So it's not like Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's not like Disney um, but yeah, check out <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. But yeah, check out Sugar. Um but, 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 I'll try and see if I can if we can make a coverage of three body problem work out, maybe I'll have you and Ayo back because you guys have you guys have obviously read Ayo has read one book and I think you read all of them and you guys have thoughts going book. in. So yeah. I'll be interested to talk about that with you guys. But for now, um, please tap into Is This Cinema? We're covering lots of movies over the next few years. We're going to, few years? The next few weeks. Hold Up Us, An Ultimate Movie 4, American Fiction. Um, they, talk, they will give their thoughts on Ferrari and Maestro. Yeah, I can't think of it. Uh, yeah, that's it, basically. And then we'll obviously do the Oscars. We'll do some awards coverage and we'll just keep on doing things until we get tired. But for now, TMT, thank you very much. Sign up. Um, so, <laughs> well, okay, that's fine. That's, you just want to start with racism and end racism. Um, thank you everyone for listening. Uh, please join us next week. Oh, go. this is a week late, but go check out the Monkey Man trailer if you haven't seen it. Uh, Dev Patel, that trailer looks so sick. Um, mm. It's like a goofier John Wick. Why do you say it's goofy? Because it's in India. No, because wow. if you notice the fact wow. he's not super clean. Wow. No, I'm joking. Yeah, he's not. Yeah. It, it's it's he's proficient, but also not like superhuman like John Wick is. Yeah, he's not. Like that shot in the trailer well. where he, yeah, where he tries to jump out the window and the window doesn't break. He's yeah. like, oh okay, you're just a guy who out. like did a lot of training. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, check out check that out. Uh, TMC is a big fan of the Roadhouse trailer. I like the first half. I didn't like the second half of the trailer. Yeah, um, I like. I think it's like when McGregor entered. Yeah, it was like the first half of the trailer is like, oh, this should have had a theatrical release, and the second half, like, mm-hmm. oh no, it shouldn't. This it shouldn't is what, yes, exactly. <laughs> As that's a, like word for word, I was like, oh, this should have, I would I like to see this in cinema. And I'm like McGregor walks in, I'm like, oh, okay, no, this is a no. get drunk and watch on TV kind of kind of movie. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is um, Thursday night. Yeah. Anyway, again, thank you very much for coming by. Guys, I hope you enjoyed Mr. Smith as much as we did. Uh, if not, I thank you for still listening. And join us next week when I'll talk about some other thing. But I'll be joined by the incomparable Oscar winner, first time director, Daniel Kalia. Bye, guys. Woo! Bye. Woo! Bye.